Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Kryptonite, the crypto investor channel. I'm Boris, so let's dive in. I'm with Col uh, Colton today. Hello, Colton. Hey, Boris. Welcome back to the Kryptonite channel, everyone. Let's dive right in. Today, we'll be talking about Stellar. Can you let us know what is Stellar and uh, give us a little synopsis on the project? Sure. So Stellar, it's very much like uh, Ripple and XRP, and we'll see why in a minute. Uh, it's a blockchain, the Stellar blockchain, and it's really meant to do cross-border payments. Uh, their token called the XLM, the Stellar Lumens, is the native asset. And uh, Stellar is the network, whereas the Lumens are the uh, units of cryptocurrencies to power the network. What about the history and performance of Stellar Bourse? It was launched in 2014 by Jeb McCaleb and Joyce Kim. Now, Jeb McCaleb was also one of the co-creators of Ripple. And Jeb McCaleb was also the guy that created Mt. Gox, the first big exchange in the world uh, that he then sold to uh, the French guy that eventually turned it into a total disaster. But uh, Jeb McCaleb has been in cryptocurrencies extremely early on. And he had a fallout with the others uh, from Ripple. So he forked from them and he created the Stellar Development Foundation. And that's what's promoting uh, Stellar Lumens. Uh, at first, they created 100 billion tokens with an annual 1% uh, issuance rate. The, uh, what was important is that the Stripe CEO of the time, Patrick Collinson, you know, actually invested $3 million in seed funding and he received 2 billion tokens in exchange. By 2015, they redesigned their consensus protocol, you know, uh, after a ledger fork in 2014. And uh, also by 2017, they launched what they call Lightyear. And it's, it's a for-profit entity that builds a universal payment network on Stellar. And uh, they're offering uh, grants programs to try to motivate people, you know, into developing onto that project. And uh, it was up to $2 million worth of XLM. So they were not giving cash, but they were giving their token. Uh, by 2019, they removed the 1% issuance, annual issuance rate. And then they decided to burn 55 billion tokens, reducing the total supply to 50 billion. And then uh, because of that burn, you know, it decreased their ownership from 85% down to 60%. The token XLM, itself it's pretty much available everywhere on a centralized exchange also on some decentralized exchange but the the whole time high price was 87 cents the current price is almost nine cents it's like 8.8 .8 cents and the whole time high was a while ago it was back in 2018 so they didn't remake their all-time high in the last bull run in the bull run of 2021 so that's important to note back in 2021 at the highest they pretty much get get back to 70 cents so they were 17 cents short of their all-time high so to me, that's not a great sign. And some people, of course, especially people that are in defense of XRP, you know, just say, well, XML is just a copycat. Now, their market cap is $2.3 billion. Uh, so obviously, that's a pretty good size project still. Their total and max supply is 50 billion, and their current circulating supply is almost 27 billion. What about the on chain data, and how does it compare to Ethereum bores? So, just so people understand, we have that new section on chain data. It's really to look at some on chain data that are important to understand what's going on. And the reason we always compare with Ethereum is that Ethereum 
is a uh, utility coin and uh, so are most of the project we discuss here on the channel. So that's why it's, it's good to have it as a reference to have something to compare it to. So XLM in real volume, they're down 60% uh, over the past month, whereas Ethereum is down 62%, virtually very, very close in, in terms of, uh, of volume. In terms of active addresses, over the past month, they've gone down almost 43% for XLM, whereas ETH active addresses is up almost 6%. Transaction volume for XML were down 25% over the past month. For Ethereum, we're down 40% on the transaction volume. So here, XML is doing actually slightly better than ETH. What about the latest news and future developments for Stellar Bores? So there is a lot of bad blood between Ripple and uh, Jeb McCallum. So obviously uh, the CTO, David Schwartz, CTO of uh, Ripple, came out recently and basically called Jeb McCallum a crazy fool holding a live grenade. Uh, they don't like him very much. Uh, now, this is always not a great idea to criticize other projects some do it charles huskinson very often does it on other projects competitors of cardano it would probably be a good idea that people don't try to fight inside the crypto communities but try to fight you know the regulators and all the politicians that are uh, not putting the proper regulations in place etc but it is true that McCaleb, uh, everything he has touched for some reason, you know, it's never that great. There was even uh, when the Ripple case came out uh, a little bit over two years ago, they said it's funny that XRP is being attacked, but not XLM. And some speculated that Jeb McCaleb would have been the one that basically threw Ripple under the bus and said, uh, basically, work with the SEC, giving them some insider information because he was part of the Ripple team, and uh, in exchange, you know, for kind of immunity on XLM. So it's never been proven, but it seemed very suspicious that two extremely similar projects, almost identical projects, one is being you know sued by the sec and the other one is like clear as day so but there's a lot of uh yeah bad blood between uh between those two companies also if you look at the technical analysis on uh xlm right now it is in the oversold territory the rsi is at 34. technically it's even below 30 whenever you really want to be oversold but it's it's pretty low um and there have some resistance so it looks like uh they got rejected at the 100 day emea which was at uh nine cents 9.3 cents so now it's below and it's acting as resistance so you know if there is more breakdown we could see definitely numbers keep on going down Thank you for that information, Boris. What about staking uh, Stellar? How does that work? You cannot stake Stellar. Uh, it's like XRP. Those are not stakeable projects. They are not, uh, you know, proof of stake projects. So the only way you can do it is on centralized exchanges. And we know how dangerous that is. Now, there is one called Whitebit, which is not an extremely well-known uh, platform it's basically an exchange they offer you some crazy number of 23 percent apy but very dangerous nexo offers five percent binance offers 1.77 percent you know and uh, it goes down from there uh, storm gains another one that offers 10 percent all of those in my opinion are very dangerous if you want to be safe uh, the best is if you like XLM and you want to keep your XLM, uh, keep them safe in a uh, in a wallet. Uh, could be uh, either a hot wallet or 
a uh, cold wallet, but definitely not on an exchange. But that's what the exchanges will give you. Awesome. Thank you, Boris. What about the price prediction? Do you really see Stellar hitting a 16x by 2030? Well, let's say that, first of all, they are very much uh, under the same problem than XRP. If XRP wins their case, maybe XLM might have also a run up, you know, uh, like most likely XRP will. But if XRP loses their uh, their lawsuit or if something is is bad, uh, then most likely XLM will not do very well at all. But for now, and we still have the unknown on when that's going to happen. I heard John Deaton saying that worst case scenario, the XRP news on the project, on the lawsuit, the judge should be giving a ruling on this any day now, but it could be as late as September 30th. And the reason that it's September 30th is that by September 30th, if she doesn't rule on this, then she has to go in front of Congress to explain why she's taking for, she's taking too long to make her ruling. And usually judges don't want to do that because if they go in front of Congress to explain themselves, uh, that usually puts them in a very bad position to ever become a judge in a higher court, like let's say the Supreme Court or a court of appeal or whatever. So most likely she would not risk her own career uh, and she would give a ruling at the latest by uh, sep September 29th, because the deadline is September 30th. So that said, uh, on XLM, we're looking at 19 cents to 20 cents on uh, over the next year, doubling to 40 cents by 2026, going to about 80 cents by 2028, and possibly a dollar 40, dollar 50 by 2030. But once again, you have to be careful with those numbers because uh, there can only be so many blockchains that do cross-border uh, cross payments. And is it really needed to have too many? So keep in mind also that a lot of the projects we're, we're looking at right now, maybe they might do fairly well or not in the next bull run, but a lot of them are going to disappear over time. So if you make good returns on any project, XLM, XRP, Cardano, whoever, it doesn't matter. Uh, most likely it's a good idea to take profits because you don't know what's going to happen at the next bull run or the next bear market. That's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Colton. We look forward to see you on the next Crypto Night video. I hope this video helps. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like the video at the end, click on the thumbs up.